Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com. In this tutorial, we're going to look at char arrays in C++. This is something that I really should have mentioned earlier in the course, and I was kind of reminded to mention it here because we can do some interesting stuff with pointers and char arrays. But first, I need to show you what a char array is, and this is quite important in C++. Uh, so we've seen that before you can um, define strings of text in C++ like this. Let's say string text equals hello. And we can output it with CL like this, text, endler. Let's run that. So we've seen this previously um, in this tutorial series, C++ for complete beginners. Um, but we can also actually um, store text in an array of chars. So we've seen the char type before. It's, um, it's one byte long and it's often used for storing characters from the ASCII character set. We've seen that previously. Um, but we can have an array of chars. Let's call it text array. And we've seen, as we've seen before, you could initialize that using this kind of syntax. And we put the characters that we want to put in there in single quotes like this. Might as well add on the O. Now I've come this far. <laughs> so let's, let's run that. That also works. And see how it will output it as you'd hope that it would. Um, but there's a, a shortcut here because instead of doing this, we can just put the text in double quotes. And C++ then will happily put these separate characters into the char array. So that also works. And it's, it's actually very common to do this in C++. Sometimes it's more useful to store ch characters in, an, uh, in a char array like this, um, in, a, in a, what you could call a primitive string, than it is to use the string class, which, um, which I've showed you previously. Now let's, let's iterate through this with a for loop, because there's a bit of a surprise here. Let's say for int i equals naught, i less than, and we'll use size of to get the size of the array, size of text and i++ plus plus. and let's output the characters one by one so c out and text i and then I'll, I'll have a flush there so if we run this um, what we get is well this this looks like we'd expect but um, what about if we output the index as well because actually that's going to make it clearer let's try that so I'll put some punctuation in here. We'll have each character on a separate line. And now if we run it, yeah, if I get the syntax right as well. So I need this put to operator there. Okay, let's try that. So we see that um, i is run from zero to five. That must mean that size of is returning six. So that we've iterated from i uh, starting at naught all the way up to five. And then when it gets to six, it says, okay, i is no longer less than, um, six is no longer less than size of text, and it stops. So size of text is actually returning six, even though there's only five characters in the string. And we can see that the sixth character here at position index five, remember we start the indexes at zero, so that's why the six index is five, is it appears to be blank, nothing's pr printing there. But we can find out what it is if we put a cast to an int in front of this character. So if we run this now, we actually find that the last character in the string is a zero, and we call this the null terminator, um, null string terminator. Um, and the, the reason it's there is it's just so that it's a way of letting, um, it's a way of allowing a program to know where the string actually ends. So um, there's an invisible character in the string, and that was created just by virtue of the fact that we've put this in double quotes. The double quotes append this zero value to the string, which doesn't print with C out, but it's there, and C++ can use it, your program can use it, to find out where the string actually stops. So the length of this string array is actually six, even though there's only five visible characters. Let's, um, let's maybe put this back how it was to start with. 
Um, and that means that we could loop through the string with a while loop if we wanted to. Not that that's necessarily a useful thing to do, but actually sometimes it is, uh, occasionally. So let's, let's try that. Let's say um, I use, let's say int k equals naught. And I'm going to loop while true. So let's create an infinite loop here. And let's do c out k. In fact, let's let's just start put everything on one line because it's going to be it'll look a bit nicer. Let's say c out text and in brackets here I'm going to put k and flush like that. Now, how do we know when to stop this loop? Let's increment k down here. So we could do k equals k plus 1, but you might remember that to increment an integer, we can also do k plus plus, and that will just add 1 to the value of k. And now we need to stop the loop when we reach that null terminator. So let's put up here, if k is equal to 0, sorry, if um, text k equals 0, then we need to stop the loop. We can do that with a break. I like to write it like this. So I like to put the brackets into the if and put break. But just so you know, if you've only got one line in your if, you can miss out the brackets. I think that's quite confusing, especially since if you get the indentation wrong and you type more stuff down here, you know, like this, you can end up thinking that this is part of the if, but it's not. The if only applies to the first line. So I like to put the brackets in, but you can write it like that and that will work. Let's leave it like this for the moment, although I, I wouldn't, I don't normally like to do that. Uh, so we're going to start k at naught, we're going to loop while true. If um, the, the character at position k in the, in the char string is zero, we're going to break from the loop. That means we'll stop the loop and we won't execute this. But if it isn't zero, then we'll carry on. We'll output the character and then we'll increment k. Let's run this. And we find we've got hello down here, so it works. So to practice this, um, I'd recommend doing these things. First, um, create a um, char string and output it. Then output all the chars with a for loop, and then output all the chars with a um, while true loop. And uh, just to kind of try to fix that in your mind about how this works. Uh, one thing I'll say, which I'll repeat later on, is that um, if you do all the exercises in these videos, you'll, you'll sort of have a lot of stuff in your memory that will be there, even if you can't instantly recall it, but it will be there somewhere and uh, you won't actually feel completely easy with C++ until you've written lots of programs of your own. And we're going to finish this course by writing one little complete program. But um, you'll need to invent programs of your own to write and uh, have a go at writing them to really, to really feel easy with this. Nevertheless, if you do do the exercises, it will help tremendously because when you come to writing your own programs, at the very least, you'll kind of know what kind of thing you need in there, even if you have to Google for the exact syntax. So I'll leave it there for this tutorial, and until next time, happy coding.